Hello everyone, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ragi Mohammed Ismail. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Nuclear Power Plants, National Research University in Moscow. And today we are going to talk about the modern trends in nuclear power. As we all know, the world now aims to move away from fossil fuels to combat climate change. And many countries are considering the introduction of nuclear energy to promote clean and reliable, ener reliable energy production. Nuclear technology uses the energy released by the fission of atoms of certain elements. And it was first developed in the 1940s during World War II. So research initially focused on producing bombs, bombs in the 50s of the last century attention turned to the peaceful use of nuclear fission and <coughs> its control to generate energy. Civil nuclear energy now has more than 18,000 years of experience in reactors and um, operates nuclear power plants in 32 countries around the world. Far more countries rely in part on nuclear energy through regional transmission networks. For example, Italy and Denmark get about 10% of their electricity from imported nuclear power. And when the commercial nuclear industry boom began in the 1960s, there were clear boundaries between the industries of East and West. On the other hand, the nuclear industry today is characterized by global character. For example, a reactor under construction in Asia today may contain components of European of or American origin. Likewise, uranium from Australia may end up in a reactor in the United Arab Emirates, having been enriched in the Netherlands and manufactured in South Korea. The uses of nuclear technology extend far beyond providing low carbon energy. It helps doctors to diagnose and treat patients and also has a role in space exploration. These diverse uses place nuclear technologies at the center of the world's efforts to achieve sustainable development. Nuclear power can provide solutions to electricity consumption growth, air quality concerns and energy supply security. Many innovations for the expanded use of nuclear technologies in related fields such as heat or hydrogen production are also underway. If we look at the situation of nuclear energy in the world today, uh, we would see some kind of a timeline. As the first commercial nuclear power plants began operating in the 1950s, and nuclear power now provides about 10% of the world's electricity from about 440 power reactors. And nuclear energy is the second largest source of low carbon energy in the world, 28% of the total in 2019. More than 50 countries use nuclear energy in about 220 research reactors. In addition to research, these reactors are used to produce medical and industrial isotopes, as well as for training. As we can see in this figure, the number of operating reactors in the world, uh, we could see that it, uh, it was growing uh, since the uh, 1960s steadily until it reached in the mid 80s some kind of a steady state uh, and it is still up till now around the number of 400 exactly 440 reactors and here we could see the nuclear electricity production about 10 percent of the world's electricity is generated by about 440 nuclear power reactors. About 55 more reactors are under construction in 15 countries, equivalent to about 15 percent of the current capacity. And in uh, uh, 2021, 
nuclear plants supplied 2,653 terawatt hour of electricity, up from 2,553 terawatt hours in 2020. Nuclear energy in the world today uh, is produced by um, uh, the 440 reactors, which comprise one source of the overall production of electricity. As we can see, fossil fuel still has the largest share of the overall. For example, coal is about 36.7% and natural gas is about 23.5%. And hydropower is about 16%, where nuclear power with its share of 10% is exceeding solar, wind, geothermal, and tidal energy. 13 countries in 2020 produced at least a quarter of their electricity from nuclear energy. France, for example, gets about 70% of its electricity from nuclear power, while Ukraine, Slovakia, Belgium, and Hungary get about half from nuclear power. Japan used to rely on nuclear power for more than a quarter of its electricity needs and is expected to return to near that level soon. The figure shows the nuclear generation by country in the year 2021. If we take a look on the developments in the, nu in the nuclear field in uh, 2022, we would see that about six reactors have been connected to the electri electric grid uh, in China, Pakistan, Finland, and South Korea, in addition to the United Arab Emirates. As for the start of construction, we would see that China has the biggest share with five reactors being uh, started uh, the process of construction and uh, one reactor for Egypt and one reactor for Turkey. As for reactor shutdowns, uh, it happened mainly in the West in the United States and the United Kingdom, which shut, shut down in the year 2022, three reactors. Of course, there is a need to add a new capacity uh, around the world, both to replace aging fi fossil fuel units, especially coal-fired ones, and to meet the growing demand for electricity in many countries. In 2019, 63% of electricity was generated from burning fossil fuels. Despite the strong support for and the growth in renewable sources of electricity in recent years, the contribution of fossil fuels to power generation hasn't changed significantly in the last 15 years. It was 66.5% in 2005. Under the OECD ambitious scenario, nuclear power generation will increase by approximately 75% by 2050 to 4,714 terawatt hour and capacity will grow to 669 gigawatts. The World Nuclear Association puts forward a more ambitious scenario than this that proposes adding 1,000 gigawatt of new nuclear capacity by 2050, providing one quarter of the then electricity, about 10,000 terawatt hour, out of 1,250 gigawatt of capacity after allowing the commissioning for new, uh, um, a number of units. Right now, 
amongst the emerging countries in the nuclear field, we could see that Bangladesh, Belarus, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates are building their first nuclear power plants, while a number of other countries are moving towards the use of nuclear energy to produce electricity. Regarding the improving of the performance of existing reactors, we could see that it has improved drama dramatically over time, over the past 40 years. The proportion of reactors reaching high capacity factors has increased significantly. For example, 68% of reactors had a power factor above 80% in 2021, compared to less than 30% in the 1970s. Uh, this figure shows us the long-term trends in capacity factors. It is also noted that there is no significant age-related trend in the average power factor of the reactors over the past few years. Here we could see the mean capacity factor between the years 2017 and 2021 by age of reactor. In addition to commercial nuclear power plants, there are about 220 research reactors operating in more than 50 countries, and more are under construction. In addition to their use for research and training, many of these reactors produce medical and industrial isotopes. Use of reactors in naval propulsion is mostly restricted to major navies where they have, be, they have played an important role for five decades, providing power to submarines and large surface ships. More than 160 ships, mostly submarines, are built by about 200 nuclear reactors and have gained more than 13,000 years of experience with marine reactors. Russia and the United States have decommissioned many of their Cold War era nuclear submarines. Russia also operates a fleet of large nuclear powered icebreakers and has more under construction. It also connected a floating nuclear power plant with two reactors with a capacity of 32 megawatts to the grid in the remote Arctic region of Bevik. Thank you for being with us and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.